explain what Margot was thinking when he developed the Criterion Reference Instruction Framework, it might help to start with the origins of instructional design and his early role in it. Instructional design is generally viewed as having its origins in World War II. At the time there was a great need for training and a considerable amount of training materials were developed based on the principles of instruction, learning and human behaviour. The success of these training programs piqued the interest of psychologists and they subsequently began to develop various theories and models for training. Marga had first-hand experience training in the US Army in a role that involved instructing recruits on a large scale. However, he found that in many cases the training did not achieve what was intended. He began to formulate ways of improving methods of training delivery, which led him to publish his work Preparing Objectives for Programmed Instruction. In the book, he speaks about the importance of knowing what changes are required before embarking on the instructional design process. He calls these required changes instructional objectives. These objectives have three characteristics, performance, conditions and criterion. The performance objective is what the learner should be able to do after the training. While the conditions objective specifically states what conditions the learner should be able to perform the task in. And finally, the criterion objective describes how well it must be done. Basically, the instructional objective clearly states what the intended outcome of the training should be. Importantly, these objectives need to be measurable. Here's an example of a good objective. A master student studying education and training management should by the end of the course be able to describe and demonstrate understanding of at least six out of 10 learning theories. Marga also suggests that vague verbs should be replaced with more specific verbs that are open to fewer interpretations. The list of specific verbs shows behaviours that can be observed, making it easier to assess. Have a look at a training scenario that illustrates a poorly defined objective. Let's assume that we are creating a training program for Microsoft Word, where the goal is to train people to use the program in a receptionist job. A poorly defined objective for this training program would be something like this. In this course, you will learn how to use Microsoft Word to support the administration functions in an office environment. This objective does not reflect any observable behavior, making it impossible to assess. A better defined objective would make use of observable behaviors. For example, type a letter, format a document, insert images, use mail merge, print a document. It's possible to observe all these activities, which makes assessment much easier and more transparent. Marga further developed his ideas on instructional objectives and created a framework that he termed Criterion Reference Instruction. The framework includes four critical aspects. The first is the goal or task analysis. Here the instructional designer must identify the competencies to be learned. Next, the performance objectives need to be defined and they should provide a clear outcome that can be measured and assessed. This assessment or evaluation of the learning is based on the criteria established in the objectives. It's referred to as the criteria and reference testing. Finally, they should develop learning modules that are linked to specific objectives. In other words, criteria and reference instruction is built around the premise that a learner should be able to fulfill the criterion of meeting the learning objective. So it focuses on designing a training program or a course in a way that enables all the learners to achieve a specific level of skill. If your content design and development process includes the above, you are engaged in criterion-referenced instruction. <laughs>